I have to shave this mustache down. Oh, Magnum P.I. Hey, butterfly affecting. I like that um, that username. Butterfly affecting. I like that username. Hey, Trish. Why she put a heart? That must be default. Okay. Yes, look, Kim Chanel Bang. Did right. You wear a bang, period. I did, girl. You made me wear a bang, honey. Um. We can wait a little bit for people to get in here. Hold on. Somebody got their um, username, Carol Baskin. I saw them follow me the other day. I saw them just lost. Carol Baskin, nah, nah. That's what they said. Are you white, Carol Baskin, or black? I meant to ask you that the other day. Um, what's I about to say? You see, ain't this cup cute? Look at the bottom. It is very cute. My sister did that. I got to tell her. Thanks, I forgot. I need to shave down this Magnum P.I. mustache. You know, you know what? Shave down this Magnum P.I. mustache of mine. You black baby. Oh, okay. <laughs> <laughs> I was wondering. I was like, I seen her out and about. All yeah. right. Let's see where you start. Yeah, this is tequila. This is a tequila sunrise. Ready? Yeah, I'm ready. Hey, you guys. Welcome to the Good Old Nasty Podcast with your girl, She Gossips. And it's your boy, Q, from Juicy Talk Radio. First of all, that lipstick is cute. To it's safe. You know, I made my own color because I don't have an actual color that goes with this. What you mix it up? Um, yeah, I mixed it with um, it's two different ones. Oh, okay. So listen, I am giving Black Barbie right a thick Black Barbie. Yes. <laughs> yeah. Don't flash your titties on this live today, girl. They get the screenshot in my titties from that, that live quick, we did. That, that was quick as fuck to be screenshot. Mm-hmm. They probably said, ooh, bam, bitch. They stopped that bitch. He was like, oh, titties. <laughs> Hi, guys. So, um, we, me and you were just having a conversation, mm-hmm. and we were talking about disciplining children, right? Yeah. Basically, do y'all feel, the conversation was, do you feel beating a child is helpful or hurtful to them long term? And I don't think that I want to beat my kid. I think that, especially when they're they're defenseless towards you. You're a girl. You're bigger than they are. You're a grown up. You know what I'm saying? Of course they did something wrong, but I don't think that you should beat your children. Like beat them. You know what I'm saying? Let me. Tell I don't. You. I don't. I don't. And I was. I grew up in a household that I did get a whooping, mm-hmm. and I, because of that, I don't like I to. Don't, don't fucking touch me. So, and even if it's like a little nudge, like I'm like, okay, bitch, no, we're fighting. Because you want to fight me, right? You, you touch my body. You want to fight me. Well, and that's not healthy. So that, That's a problem. And let me tell you why. So for me, especially with boys, um, boys are going to challenge you. That's just yeah. what it is. And yeah. your little talks are not going to, once I know that's all you're going to do to me, I'm going to keep talking back. Because I know all you're going to do is try to get me. And that whole talk, see that whole talking back to now, now I'm going into mommy mode. Now I got to bust you in your shit. Because you think. (laughs) No, I'm I'm, I'm talking about not as a teenager. I'm talking about as a a kid. Like, as a baby. Like, you know, toddlers, one, ten, maybe when they get to like 10, 11, 12, 13, Thank we might have to start, like, you know, you see what she said? <laughs> she said, I, what? 
I have son. There are times you got to lay hands. There are. And I'm telling people, they keep saying that, and then they get that one child where you have no choice. Because guess what? Not only are they going to get so used to you with them bullshit-ass talks, but as, there's going to be a point where they're going to go in the street, and they're going to start embarrassing you. And then it's, your parenting will show that you're not doing shit at home. But, 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 but fucking talk. But that's not always true. And for boys, I can tell when they don't get beat. When I went to school, I knew exactly what kids was not getting beaten by the way they acted in school. I knew who was not getting their ass for it because we did certain things. My oldest child tested my gangster. We, I'm telling you. But again, I'm talking about when they're like six, seven, eight. You know what I'm saying? Like, even, at a certain then, age, I understand that they, we got to put hands on because you motherfucker, you think that you're going to try me. I get that. But at seven and eight, let me tell you why you also have to start it. If you start it early, you might not have to do it later on. My mama did not start beating me until I was like 14. And by then, I was so used to. Oh, you're out of control. You need, you needed your ass whooped. And by then, I was so used to. I was so used to her just coming in there fussing. It dawned on me one day, like, she ain't gonna never start running her mouth, whatever. I'm gonna do what I wanna do. That was in my mind. So one day, she had to show me that like, you got me fucked up. So, okay. One day, I was arguing with her back and forth. I'm so used to her, like, doing nothing. She told me, don't go to this football game because my grades were bad because I was acting crazy in school. She went to work. And I, she went to work, and I went to, I went to the football game anyway. Because I'm like, when I get home, she ain't going to do nothing but fuss in the way. And that's all she was doing all the way in the house. I just slammed the door because I was tired of hearing it. When I say that fucking door came open, I had braids back then. She yanked them fucking braids back. And literally smacked me so hard, my feelings were hurt for like three days. She smacked the shit out of me. Girl, she smacked your feelings hurt. Girl, she smacked the feelings out of me, bitch. I was like, and I was crying. And she was like, if you ever slam that door and I'm talking to you again, I'm going to fuck you. My mom was so mad. And she's never said like the F word to me. But that day, she said, I'm going to fuck you up. I'm going to fuck you up. Because yeah. by then, I was already talking back so much. So that's why I said, if you started early, I would have known that's what I would get if I do this. But me, mm -hmm. by me knowing that you're not going to do shit, I'm going to just do what I want to do. So that's why I said certain kids, you're going to have, it depends on the circumstance. You're going to have to give them a little pop, stop. Because, you know, if not, they're going to go to other people's house and the daycare acting crazy. They're going to say, this girl, this fucking badass child, she do something with him. You know? I understand. I just, you know, so let's talk about fathers putting their hands on their girls, though. Do you think that that men should put their hands on their daughters? This is going to sound real stupid. Y'all going to call me crazy. It's going to sound dumb, but they should only beat the daughters who are mentally strong. A daughter who is weak. Hold up. A daughter who is weak. Bitch, shut the wait, fuck up. You sound, you sound fucking crazy, nigga. Listen, you listen. sound crazy. The daughter who is weak-minded might grow up and think that this is what men do when you do something bad. and You know what I'm saying? So, so I, you beat, like, beat the strong child because... They act what? like the weak child, if they're bad, I just don't think you should beat the weak Girl, child. Girl, get the I fuck out of here. I don't. I feel bad. Because, like, I had a cousin. Let me tell you, I'm not going to say her name. I got a cousin. You know how you can just tell they're not, like, they're just, like, very timid? Uh -huh. Like, she was so timid. When she got beatings, we used to feel bad. And those are the ones, I'm. <laughs> those are the ones, like, I used to hate when her daddy beat her because I'm like, she's already timid. I don't want her going in relationships timid. You know what I'm saying? So I think certain ones you should But do. you don't beat a strong child, though. I don't like, I don't I'm like that. When that strong child is, is bad, not just for no reason. When that strong child... No, bitch, I don't like it. When she's bad, you have... I'm just, in general, regardless of the age, to me, certain children need a pop or a, a belt. She said... I, was, I, I Okay, I... I, I'm talking about beating. Popping is different. Like, you pop, don't do that again. What I just said to you on the phone, my daddy didn't have to, to get me. I was only wild with my mama. Didn't I just say? And sometimes you know not to play with your dad. You said, you said the girl, the dad should, to, should step in if the girl gets wild, wild with her mom. I, I agree, mm -hmm. but he only did put his hands on her. My, dad my mom was, didn't let my dad, well, she beat him, but she, <laughs> she didn't let my father hit me at all. She let him beat my brother. You know what I'm saying? And he would just pop my brother. You know what I'm saying? Like with yeah, a yeah. with the with the wooden brushes, <laughs> hard as wooden brushes. Um, but yeah, nah, I don't like it. The Wilson ain't beating their kids around. We'll know. We'll find out when they get older. They got a little pop in the house. I, I'm sure they got a little pop. I, I'm sure they got a little pop. Like don't do that. But I'm talking about like beating. Like oh, get get a switch. Nah, I'm not doing that to my kids. Yeah, I'm not gonna whoop you with a switch. You, my hand is hard enough. 
Um, yeah, you you. I told people. Um, there's a lot of people used to judge people's parents when they, and I said, y'all, y'all gotta keep in mind, y'all gotta get your own kids. And then people go. Be, I agree. I mean, be, I'm, I'm not, if you beat your children, that's your business. I'm talking about me and mine. I'm not because I know I'm heavy handed. I hit like a nigga, so I'm not gonna beat my kid. My um, but bitch, you no. talk back. See, my kid gonna learn the word bitch real early. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, okay, that's, oh, speaking of that, before we move on, do you think somebody was saying that the other day in the comments? I hated when my mom called me a bitch. It was normal to me, but other women were so offended. To me, it's not a big deal when somebody say bitch, but I do realize a lot of women do not like being called a bitch, and I didn't know it was yeah. that bad. They'd be like, don't fucking call me that. And I'm like, well, we say that all the time. Like, we'll be like, yeah, bitch. I know I get it. Teach is on. My kids gonna learn the word bitch real, real fast, and they gonna understand what it means. Like, bitch, don't fucking do that. Sharon says, shit, my mother. Told this bitch. <laughs> she says, shit, I my mother killed me before. I need you to speak up. Huh? Or get closer to your mic. Oh. Um... She says, shit, my mother killed me before. <laughs> Straight up, I used to get my. Ass I, I remember my mom. She hit me so. One time I said, "I don't know, I don't care, I don't wear pink underwear." To my mom, and when I tell you, she said, "You don't care," and I slammed my door. She came through that motherfucker so fast. She hit me so hard there was a, a like a body print of me of my head in the fucking wall. She hit me so hard, I forgot who I was. So. <laughs> This love motherfucker. Yes, you know, see, some people, everybody's different. We in our family, we like, I'm gonna beat the hell out of that little bitch. That's how we be doing. That little nigga right there. That's how we do. That little nigga right there need his ass beat. But to us, when they get older, they're used to hearing it. Some people, parents be like, you know, some people kids say, that's how your mom and them talk to you, and they make you feel like, is we wrong? Is we parenting wrong over this motherfucker? Or what? Girl, hold on. Let me actually. I slammed my door once, and she took it off the hinges. Okay. That too. Ricky Smiley did that on his reality show. His son came in late. He took the doors off the hinges. Period. Um, what you say you doing? Uh, I have to turn the I have to turn the volume up on here. I'm sorry. Keep going. She got me. So she is pretty. Um, Thanks, baby. So okay. So let's talk about the Braxtons. Oh, uh, okay. <laughs> So um, we all know that Tamar is current. Is she still in the hospital? Do we know? She was transferred to a mental health facility. She's alive. I mean, she's alive. Oh, wow. She's she, a to a mental health So she's on watch. Mm -hmm. She went, I guess, for some counseling or something. OK. OK. So she was found unresponsive. And now, the, the you know, everybody's speaking out for the family and things like that. I think that then with the Tracy that says stop having people speak for our family or something like that. Tawanda said none of the family spoke out to stop speaking on behalf of them because none of them said nothing. Even Tracy just did an interview on live with Gossip Girl and said that she's in Maryland, so she don't they don't know. So she said they haven't said anything because they just don't know. Just keep them in their prayers because you know Tamar is pretty private anyway. The only person that so the only one that showed up to Tony was Tony. Tony's the only one in L.A. You know Trina and Tawanda. Where's Tawanda? Georgia. Trina, oh, so she's here. Trina and, Tawanda, oh. Trina and Tawanda are in Georgia, and Tracy's in D.C., and the brother's in D.C. So yeah. the only one in L.A. was Tony. And, you know, they got, only got David's side. So they, when they're saying they don't know, they just only have, they haven't talked to Tamar to know yeah. like, what happened. So that's what they're trying to say. And everybody keeps yeah. trying to talk on behalf of them, and none of them said nothing. So, yeah. Hold on. It said, I watched the preview to our show. It looks like a mess. Mona seemed, did Mona produce that? Yeah. Um, no one, no one. So they, so the, the sisters, went, okay, so the sisters are mad at Tamar's boyfriend for saying it was we TV. So it was rumored, remember Tawanda said none of them said nothing, but it was rumored that since David mentioned the we TV beef on the 911 call <laughs> that they were upset about that because they felt it had no merit on the 911 call. Um, but it kind of did. If they're asking what happened, he was explaining. She yeah. was stressed out because of this, and this is what happened. Correct. Now, he could have said that to the actual hospital, okay, and told the people, I need, she's unresponsive. I need a unit here now. What happened? But when, when, when you see your loved one unresponsive, you only think about the last conversation that y'all had 
why this is happening. And he probably didn't even think to himself, like, I'm on a recorded line. He just needs help. And so and he was crying so hard. So, he was. you know. But you know, Tamar was filming three shows. People don't keep in mind. She had Braxton. She had the Glam show on WeTV. And she had that show, Tamar, uh, Get Your Life. Uh, she yeah. was filming three shows. So she probably was stressed the fuck out. And yeah. everybody trying to tell her what to do, what to say, and what not to say. She probably was just like, man, fuck this, you know? But yeah. um, I feel bad. Um, a suicide attempt makes her uninsurable, so WeTV won't touch her. Really? Interesting. But um, they just asked in the comments about Meek Mills. Um, did something happen today with him? You know, I don't follow him. So Big Mel decided that he was finally going to tell everybody that he no longer wants to be with his baby mama. And, I mean, I already called it. He never wanted to be with her. We, the reason why he even um, claimed her was because we already knew that they were fucking around. Mm. So. Oh, he just now sitting out together or something? Yeah. Like, oh. we give a fuck. The thing is, he wants to hold in private and in peace. So when y'all see him out with other girls or see him on other girls' Instagram stories or whatever, he don't want to hear y'all shit because he's single. That's why he did that shit. Because I, I hope he understands that we don't give a fuck. You know what? A lot of um, people people just nosy, and I get it. I, I saw, um, do you know that white actor, uh, Robert Downey Jr.? Yeah. Does he have kids? I have no idea. But I was laughing at an old interview of his, and somebody asked him about, open relationships he was like if you're gonna fuck just fuck like why are you talking about it online like he's like i don't understand you we're, we're fucking what's the problem i get it like he's like like what what's up we did it now what he's like i don't i don't under he don't under and quentin tarantino another one like he said i have <laughs> quentin tarantino or gavin your ass in the interview y'all better be yeah honest. he said he said what does that have to do with my film nothing yeah nothing hold on he didn't publicly announce them together but publicly announced they're not together ain't that crazy Correct. Correct. Yeah, he just started claiming her because everybody else knew that they were together. Like, and it's, girl. And it's okay if you want to make the girl feel special for a night or two, but once they link you, all your hole and stuff got to stop. But now that everybody gonna think you a dog ass nigga. If you don't care what people think, you keep doing. But it. he he's supposedly a nigga who don't give a fuck what people think about him. So I'm fucking confused. That's I don't. I can't get with Meek. I'm cool off that nigga. And I used to defend that nigga like I defend Nikki. And I'm disgusted. I'm learning by him and his actions for him to one, he was one obsessed with Nikki. Okay. He's never getting over that girl. Two, now he has this baby with this girl who he really don't even give a fuck about. They cool, but you know, he don't give a fuck about that girl. And then he uses like the following year, that was all last year, right? Yeah. yeah. This year, he uses all of his energy and all of his time online to talk about six nine while your son is being born. You're a fucking clown out here, dog. You're you know, a fucking clown. Sometimes, sadly, you know, when he got off those opioids, I felt like he just, I felt like his mind just went, you know what? I'm too sober for this bullshit. And you know what I'm saying? <laughs> he probably, probably. He probably speaks to stuff. Um, no, she don't need to reinforce her security. He just need to leave her alone. And stop trying to speak to her at jury shops. Because I would ask, why are you even here? Why are you? <laughs> Why are you here? Why are you even, I don't understand. Why are you here? What do you want? Like that, you know. That used to be your brother. What? Happened? Yeah, she did. I, well, I just told y'all what happened. I can't get with fuck shit. This is it. I don't care if I like you or if I don't. I'm always gonna call out bullshit. Mm -hmm. When Nikki was getting into, when Kanye and Ariana got into it over, well, I don't forget even what, but they were getting into it on Twitter. That had nothing to do with Nikki. Why is she commenting <laughs> on it? Why the you for what? Well, you were giving all this bad like press, that. anyways. You definitely like, didn't like that. Yeah. Just leave it where it is. Like, no, when you're doing fuck shit, like when he decided to team up with Aubrey and all that fuck shit, I can't get with that. I can't. So I don't fuck with him no more. Yeah, he's a. Uh... <laughs> I, I like Meeks. You know, I listened to today his song on with LMA. I really just like LMA part though, twenty four seven all day. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I like that one. But um, <laughs> I like that one. I love that song. Um, let's talk about Kanye and Kim. Lord Jesus. Let me take a. So Kanye went on a rant this past week. Really, uh, I think it started like Thursday and it ended yesterday because he apologized to his wife. 
Um, he said that basically Kim is not Kim. He been trying to divorce Kim, which is T, because we all thought that Kim was going to divorce him. But he's like, "Bitch, I've been trying to divorce her." But since I knew, I'm, I, it's ever since I realized or I got the information that she met with Meek behind my back about prison reform. He said prison reform. There was a dead ass meeting with four people. Kind of relax. Oh my god. No, big. You tell me who the fuck you meeting with, especially if it's a man. Don't go meet with no man behind my back. When, when you fly to Wyoming, when you want. Don't tell I'm me. going to our, our second home, Don't bitch. Don't tell me what he told her on that show. I didn't know I need to tell you that. Remember he told her that on that show? She said, were you going to tell me you were going to... I didn't know I need to tell you that. Okay, then. That's all I would have said. Oh, what did she say? Wait, what did he say? She said he flew to Wyoming. He came in there. That's the day they argued about that photo shoot. Remember he said... She said, hey, when were you going to tell me you were going to Wyoming? He's like, I didn't know I need to tell you that. She was like, why wouldn't you want to... I would have said... Oh, you didn't know that? Oh, okay. Say say less. Bet. Because that's why I would never tell you. You're so I'm vindictive, going. bitch. You're would, so vindictive. I would never tell you where I'm going again. You will figure it out when I post it, if I decide to post it. That is not how a fucking relationship works, girl. And he does act like, I mean, I'm glad they mentioned it. I was going to say that. He does act like North is his only child. He, that's, like, he only talks about <laughs> North. I guess that's the one he actually I think that, I think, think I think it's because North was not planned. And because she wasn't planned, and and she, supposedly Kim was gonna get an abortion with her, it hit it hits him a different way. Saint was planned. You know what I'm saying? Because Kim had to go through certain, you know, IVF treatments in order for her to have. So she Saint. So was she pregnant with Saint and North? Yes, she didn't and have the last two. Okay, so got yeah. You. I was say so North is the first. Kim, North is a different type of situation. He she wasn't planned. North. You better not talk about North. He loved North. Um, you know, he said he said North's mom. Like she ain't got no fucking name. Oh yeah. Nigga. Let me correct. Let me correct it. It's two of them. He had kids, but I think because North is his only girl that he had. I was thinking because maybe because he that's the one he actually did it to Kim and got pregnant. I'm like I don't know what he not did it to Kim. He got you really only hear North's name, and I'm like why are you only talk about North? But that's a good. He it's, got, she she has a special part in his heart because of probably that story. Um, he did call Chris Kim Chris John Young, um, and he did call her a white supremacist. Yeah, that was wrong. Um, he was trying to text her. He called um, what's his fucking name with the hits? Corey with the with the woman hits. He called Corey um, Kanye because Corey don't be tripping, so he's Kanye and he's Kanye. He said that the um, the, the the movie Get Out was about him, which we all believe it is, and I know he still believes it is. Um. Okay, so first of all, let's let's get two things out the way. There's Kanye said, "You want to answer the phone or you want a war?" Remember he texted that back to her. Yeah. First of yeah. all, yeah. My husband, I understand you bipolar and shit. Don't you ever go on there addressing my mama. You get what I'm saying? Regardless of what you think, that's you don't do that because that's what I don't say nothing about your mama. Okay, so let's be very fucking clear. I would have texted him, your next tweet about my mama, we're about to go tweet for tweet. That's exactly why I would have told him. Like, how dare, like, regardless of what we think about Kris Jenner, that is still her mom. And, like, as your wife, you cannot just be going on there, going off on the, oh, you're not coming around my kids. And Because he, he was talking about Kris' parenting and saying how she's, you know, let her daughter be on the cover of Playboy, and she's, I don't know what she's trying to do. I don't know what's happening with North right now. I feel like something's happening with North where they want to probably exploit her, and Kanye ain't with it. Oh, he because totally he, said that from jump. She's not doing this celebrity life stuff right now. Correct. Mm, correct. So, he keeps talking about <laughs> Kim's parent, uh, Kim, Chris's parenting. Um, the shit is crazy, but since then, he's apologized. As he should. And then he called Kylie. He said, Kylie stinks. <laughs> I, was that a real tweet? I don't know. I was cracking. I hope it wasn't. But that shit's funny as fuck. But she was like, okay, sorry, LOL. That, her response, what do you think? If, if he did say it, that Kylie stinks, that response is what had me holler. That, okay, sorry, LOL, bitch. I was what, like, see. What, the, the thing is, Chris can't be Suge Knight because Suge Knight handled his problems when they got bad. You cannot handle somebody like Kanye. He's uncontrollable. If he's not on his, he needs to get like professional help on a serious level. Um, and <laughs> y'all think that he exploits uh, North at the church services? I think that she wants to be like little, what's okay. it, little Lele? You know, little Lele? She's, you know, I think that she wants to be like little Lele 
but she she can't. Do you remember that whole fiasco with Lil Lady had? Yeah. Yeah. Mm -hmm. When I got didn't Lil Lady come out with a song and North made it go viral, nope. and then people were thinking that it was North's song, and they didn't credit her. Yeah. Yeah, that shit. Same with the he was gonna end up with control of his coins once he's committed. I don't think that he's ever gonna get committed. No, because he's in his uh, right mind. He's not, he's he's not mentally unstable. He's just bipolar because he's in his correct. right mind, but he he just needs to be on medicines to control when he's about to get out of control. Uh, um, yeah. Let's talk about the Chloe samples. So tell what happened. So first of all, there was a designer. Um, who lent Chloe a few samples for her? Oh, Zaza. Her name is Zaza. Sorry, we call her Lil Lele. Zaza. So, Sorry, um, the um, the little girl, right? Yeah. Okay, hold on. So there was a designer that basically lent Chloe some designs, and she, long story short, was basically selling the samples that he sent her, and he. <laughs> That's so tacky. Hold on. <laughs> What'd you say? That's tacky. So she's, and then she never replied to comment. He's reached out six times with no response. And Trisha's doormat, yeah. She stole samples. Hey, you look just like your mama every time I see you, girl. My, my big cousin's on here. She was like her mama every time I see her. She so said, you on here looking like your mama. <laughs> so, so look, so he was like, the designer, let me tell you his name. The designer is Christian Cowan, and he wrote mm -hmm. Chloe Kardashian, why are my runway samples I loaned you being sold on your website? We've emailed you three times, no response. And um, she, and then she designed, then she described it as a luxury designer clothing resale site that brings the fashionable and fun clothing. <laughs> <laughs> Messy. And then she was selling the, one of his pieces for $1,300. Oh! And then he said that he's emailed her, right? Mm -hmm. They said, but since the site has been pulled down and now generates a 404 page not found error. She was trying to sell them shits real quick out her closet. Girl. And, um, and but he's dressed people like Ariana Grande, Lizzo, mm -hmm. and all. And mm -hmm. like, how dare you, bitch, try to get on there and um, I am loaned you stuff for your runway show and you didn't send them back. And then you trying to set, they pulled an Erica Jane to that designer who called her out that TikTok I sent you. Wait, so wait, 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 wait. That was, wait. That's, and that's wait, because you know I love Erica Jane. Wait. So Erica Jane was selling people samples also? The white guy says she was mean to her at first. Yeah. And then he said there were designers that sent clothes that she refused to send back and she used to joke and say, oh, they're not worried about this little piece. And then like and went on, and they said, and then they would hit them. She, they would hit her, like, hey, you need to send this back. She'd say, I'll take care of it. And they'll keep hitting. We didn't get it. We didn't get it. But people, Ramona, wow. used, to, Ramona used to do that. From So basically, Bravo, That's so ghetto. Give the people back their shit. Bravo Housewives get a budget. And um, yeah. <laughs> Go ahead. Bravo Housewives get a budget. And basically, Ramona would take her clothing budget, buy all these clothes, leave the tags <laughs> on, and return them back at the end of the season yep. and get all the thousands of dollars back. And her old assistant basically called her out. And But they said that by Erica Jane. They said that by, um, um, what's her name? Uh, Ramona. They said it about uh, Melissa Gorge. They said that about all those girls used to take their clothes back after the show was over. Um, hold on. Did Larsa fuck Trisha? I meant to ask you that. Did, did, what happened? I'm going to say yes. Because all of the Kardashian girls, she I, I, that's what the story that's going on. I don't know why this, that story is going on. That she fucked him, but they all of, um, followed her. So something happened. Mm, that's how all these hoes stay fitted. Yeah, they be taking them clothes back, child. That's why. That's why when they leave yeah, the and house, they hair. That's why they be they taking bundles right. and not returning the bundles or whatever or the wig, bitch. Girl, I mean to tell you, did you see how? Um, um, Prima Donna and that girl. girl don't give me motherfucking sorry on that mother bitch. <laughs> that raggedy, I don't like Prima Donna for multiple reasons. But mostly yeah. because she thinks that somebody is envious of her. She thinks somebody is jealous of her. Somebody wants her fucking life. Nobody wants your life, girl. What Nobody Johnson wants called, that. Johnson called a prima pig. 
<laughs> I don't I don't like Prima Donna. Like so my thing is what's her name? Jay Nice came out with um cookware. She right. She's the only black person can have cookware. She is clearly because she's talking about black women um don't copycat or you know don't infringe or some stupid shit like that. Like, but you're not the only one that could come out. You're not the only black woman that could come out with cookware. And Period. Then, and then I've always said your cooking is ghetto. Like you don't even know how to plate. I said, bitch, i just because of that, I'm looking to come out with seasonings, bitch. Y'all ready to buy some she got some seasonings, hoe? Because I can season the fuck out of some shit. Her plate looks like they, what her plate looked like um the food they put on your plate at a, a six year old birthday party. She just slam it on there. Like that shit be looking ghetto. At a banquet? <laughs> you know, them little six year old they be it like she just she don't even know how to play the quad. If y'all go to absolutely quad, quad knows how to plate. Her food looks very elegant and nice. Yeah. And quad knows how to cook. You make your food look one like like you want it. Prima Donna food look like um you can come down. She's serving at the fucking picnic and some shit. It's like family reunion, you know? I was like, girl, yeah. no pre-production. Uh, yeah, Jai stuff looks so different. Like, I don't understand what the fuck is going on with Prima Donna. She has mental issues, but clearly, I can't she said, do. What she said on the reunion, how many girls you know making six million a year? And did it, yeah, you make it so much, and you right there um, on Love and Hell. Worried about the next motherfucker, bitch. Get the fuck out of here. I don't like yeah, her. So, you know, I, I, I used to like her until I saw how every time somebody tried to do something, they, she had like they was copying off of her. I hate bitches like that. You're not the only one that's going to come out with, with lip gloss. You're not the only one going to come out with a wig line. You're not the only one going to come out with a clothing line. You're not the only one coming out with cell phone cases and t-shirts and, 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 and shampoos and face cream. Y'all are not the only ones going to do that. So stop. It's it. not. She and you got to be okay with that. She got like, I don't... With a lipstick, if she got some come out with a lipstick right now, and somebody come out with one two weeks later, first of all, production don't take two weeks. They, they clearly both of them had it in the play. Somebody Correct. And where that shit don't come overnight. Are y'all crazy? And they said that Jay Nice be cooking also. Like Jay Nice been cooking. All she been cooking. So been cooking on the you kind of gotta. Let that shit go. It's ridiculous for you to try to attack another black woman and then say that type of stuff. Like you're the only one that can have it. It's ridiculous. Can I tell you something real mean that my old, my great uncle told me one time? Okay. My great uncle said, "Any anyone, <laughs> I can't even say it. I feel bad because I'm gonna go home and visit him when I go to South Carolina." Same, hey, bro. He told us one time. Anytime you hear a woman said these girls are jealous, he said that's what they mama told them to, to take up for the fact that they ugly. <laughs> that's what he, he said anytime you hear a woman say oh they just jealous he said that's what they mama told them to, to take over the fact that they child is ugly when he said that we almost fell off the porch he said name a pretty girl that, that go around and say they just jealous oh they he said nobody said that your mama told you that because your ass was ugly and they had no other excuse why people didn't like your ugly ass he had us cracking up on that porch i said you know what I said, you know what? That's my. I said, my, my uncle, bro, do not play. Like he would give, he would read your. Now he's what you call a reader. That nigga would read when you come on that porch, and his porch be squeaking sometimes. When you, I said one time, I said, uh, I said, why is his porch squeaking so much? He said, ain't shit sweet about my porch except that sugar in your tank. <laughs> That nigga, you better not walk <laughs> ready for the race, girl. He ready. He'll sit on that porch all day with them cigarettes and smoke a whole pack out there just reading people. <laughs> That's hilarious. Um, all right, let's keep moving. Um, let's talk about Y'all don't laugh at him. It's my dad. <laughs> he did. He said they ugly. That's why they said people are jealous. Their mama told him that. <laughs> um I guess we can talk about Meg. You know, I'm, I gotta be honest. I'm sick of Meg. I'm not. I'm not even. So, so the story that's going around now is that Meg, when Meg and Tori was at Kylie's, Tori and Kylie were flirting. Mm -hmm. Meg didn't appreciate it. They got outside of Kylie's house, and Meg started beating on Tori. Correct. Yeah. And then Tori got his gun, and they said that she was giving it to that nigga. And so he got his gun and shot her five. My right. dude, you shot her five times in the foot, the same foot. I'm, that is just something don't make sense. You, if you are getting beat up, you're gonna shoot somebody five times in one foot. That doesn't make any sense to me. So it okay. was five times. 
I mean, they, they said there was five shots. So I, how much? How, I want to know how many bullets were in her. Foot. I think. I hope that he was high and drunk. You know, they all be smoking and drinking. So he probably was high and drunk and overreacting. Here's my thing. I made my decision of two days ago. I'm going to just like Meg's music. I, I trying to. Like That's what her. I told y'all. I said it. I said if you are gonna fuck with her, fuck with her because you fuck with her music. Other than that, her actual real life ain't got shit to do with us. Let's I, leave it at I, that. I can't focus on it anymore because the bottom line is I I, I I can't deal with it anymore. And then we can't. Here's the thing. Let's be clear about this. I'm gonna just say this. I'm gonna quote Remy Ma for a second. There are no rules to fighting when you put your hands on me. You can, Period. You're going to get what I give you back, and then you can take it however you want. You Period. Do not, if she, I'm not saying Meg touched him because none of us know the story. What I'm saying is if she punched him in his face. Me, I would have choked the bitch with the seatbelt. That's just me. And she would have fell out of the car unconscious. That's what would have happened. But I wouldn't have shot her. I, that's just me. But in terms of you don't tell me what to When you touch me... And you in my house, I may bust you over the head with a hookah. I may flip a tape. I don't know what I'm going to do when I get might hit you with a bat. I might hit you with whatever's close. I don't, it doesn't matter. You're going to fucking hand to yourself. You do not fucking touch me. So y'all got to stop saying he's not a man because he shot her. Do not fucking touch me. You see, she probably worked his little ass. So she, and she big as fuck. Like, she's, like, she's like 5'10", 6 foot with some fucking heels. What I want to do. Two. You said what? <laughs> what Shit. I want what I want to do is I'm learning. I like some of these celebrities um, for their music, and I'm going to keep it at that. If I ever meet Meg, I'll give her a cute hug. Hey, girl. But my opinion is what it is. If your big ass hit me, I'm going to have to knock you out because you're not no small girl. That's and it comes back to this. They say I don't like black women. But these are the reasons why. When I say, okay, if she puts her hands on him, he has every right to defend himself. You can't put your hands on me and tell me how I should retaliate. It don't work like that. It don't work like that. Like, I'm, I'm going to hit you. It don't work like that. So whatever the fuck I do to you, that's just what the fuck I do. I may have to deal with the consequences, but bitch, you're not going to put your hands on me and me not hit you back. It's not going to happen. This is what I like about Ari. They can say what they want about Ari. This is what I like about Ari. I, I, I'm starting to like Ari, too. This is what I like about Ari. Ari has proven if you fuck with me, I might, I might hit you. You know what I'm saying? But she's mm -hmm. learning now, like she said the other day, she's learning to walk away from certain things because she's trying to do other things. But she said, as long as these hoes know, you try to square up, I will punch you. I respect that. We do know she will. I, re I respect the bitch that I know is going to hit you. Because you know Period. You've already, you are, you've already shown us this is what you're going to do. So y'all got to stop saying that he's not a man because he hit her. You don't, you don't touch me and tell me how to hit you back. So, so I, period, so and that's anybody. So, just like, didn't you post the, the uh, there was a post that you made about a little boy getting beat up by a little girl that uh, supposedly of what, what could have happened? So, if a little girl beats up your son and he keeps coming home with scratches and bruises and black eyes because he doesn't want to hit the girl back because you taught him not to hit women, mm -hmm. what the fuck is gonna happen? What would you as a parent do? What would I do? I told you I would go to that school and I'm going to smack the fuck out of that little girl. Because that's going to make the parents rush up there. And when the parents rush up there, I'm going to pull my extension cord out the car and I'm going to beat the fuck out of both of them. Because clearly, since you don't know how to teach your child, I'm going to have your child watch me teach you what happens when you don't discipline when people are doing bad things. I will literally beat the fuck out of that parent. I'm not... I felt anger looking at his face. I said, I would have walked to that school, smacked that bitch, and wait in the parking lot for the parents. Period. Um, so we don't know what the situation happened, but this is what is being said is that she put her hands on Tori and Tori retaliated by shooting her. We don't I, what I'm saying We don't know what happened though. Yeah, we don't have the right thing. What have what we're saying is is that when you hit someone, you can't tell them how to hit you back. The what we're saying is keep your fucking hands to yourself. Keep your devices, Period. keep your devices to yourself, keep your hands to yourself, and you won't get hurt. Now, Thank if a nigga's just beating your ass, that's different. You know what I'm saying? But you can't just come over here because you're a woman think that you can put your hands on a man. What'd your mama say? When she hit her brothers, she knew they was going to hit her back. That's why she hit them. Because she knew that's what they were going to do. And my mama has six brothers, so she knew when I punch this nigga, he's going to punch me back. Because that's yep. So she don't she don't be agreeing. And you know what? You know, they are hypocrites. It's an NFL player. I forgot his name. 
that got uh -huh, I seen it. That got beat up twice by his girlfriend. All these yep, guys, he like, was bloody and everything. Oh, yep. He pushed her back. Oh, but if he had beat her ass, y'all. Or even if he had pushed her back, she could have fell into something, busted her head, then he's going to jail. How does that work? You see what I'm saying? That's the people get put like this. What I'm gonna do if I, when I when I get famous, I'm gonna make a PSA on my page. If y'all ever see somebody said they got beat up by me, trust and believe they hit me first. I would be very clear about this. I don't touch anybody first. You put your hands Period. on me, you will know about it. Period. And that's and that's what it is. So we'll see. Tori has not spoken out about it. I don't even think he's posted. I think that he said he's gonna probably be deported. See, and, and Canada don't play, so they don't play. Yeah, no, he but that'd be good if he get back over but deported in the US for good and just stay up there in New York. But Canada's a safe ass place. They don't do that shit. And you know, that's why I'm moving to Canada. See, 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 see this I made up my mind the other day, bitch. When I get breaks in my career, I'm going on these thirty day cruises like these old white bitches that be called now. I'm going on Yeah. I'm going on yeah. these thirty day cruises and y'all not gonna see it till I get that way I can stay mentally sane. I don't have to be feeding in the social media stuff. I'm be on vacation. You know, that's it. <laughs> Um, let's talk about Nene and the whole housewives debacle that's going on on the internet now. So we all know that Juice Adora, she's an actress, and the YouTube girl um, Latoya Forever are now on the Real Housewives of Atlanta. So, and so far, we've seen that Latoya Forever and Nene has gotten into it. <laughs> Juice, not Juice Adora. Ju I mean, Juice mind her business. Latoya, I just want to say this about Latoya. Supposedly, she was getting a divorce from her husband. That was, a, I guess, people are thinking that it's a storyline. It absolutely, it absolutely can be. She's a friend um, of the show for right now, from what they said. But her husband, this is old YouTube T. Her, all the YouTube guys, she used to try to bust that pussy open for. And all of the YouTube niggas used to be like, I don't understand how this nigga's going to marry her. Like, she's a hoe. Like, she really is a hoe. And then for her husband to come back and say, you know, the toy said that she wants to be divorced because she's for the streets. These are text messages that he posted. And it could be for a storyline, but my thing is, you could have chosen anything else. Me being for the streets, that's what we're going to go with? I'm a sure. hoe? Like, I just want to be a hoe? Like, we're not going with that. So I believe everything that her husband's saying right now about her because it's not the first time I've heard this about her. The YouTube dudes were talking about this back in, like, 2013, how much she was a hoe. So, and, and I did read the comments. They said um, they just a lot of the people said she's known for being ha quote unquote a bit much. That's oh for I'm sure. Saying. And for but sure. the thing is, she spoke out of turn. You said Nini got your aunt fired, and the network spoke out and said that's absolutely not true. Your correct. Aunt, your aunt showed up a day she was not supposed to be there, and so and then that's trespassing. So then they got rid of your ass. So that's why your aunt got fired. You trying to stir up something for Nene to come on and read your ass, bitch, and I can't wait. Loud and fucking wrong. And they all was over some empathy. I wonder what the argument was actually about. Um, because Nene came on. She didn't even at uh, Latoya forever. She just posted on Twitter, like, you have no empathy for women, this, this, and that. And Latoya was like, oh, empathy, but you got my auntie fired. And then the network you know, came back and was like, no, you're fucking wrong. Your aunt's a stalker. And this is what the fuck You know how stupid happened. she was sound in a housewife argument? No, I don't fuck you. got my aunt fired. You got my aunt fired. You sound stupid, bitch. Listen, honey, you're only here. I would have told, if I was Nene, first of all, you only here because of Candy. Okay? Period. Because Candy bring on all her little ghetto-ass friends. That's exactly what I would have said. Candy bring on all her little ghetto-ass friends to try to have somebody to have her back, and you will get nothing else for me today. Have a great one. The scene is over. You won't see me again to the cash trip, and don't even speak, bitch. I would have shut that down completely down. And then, this will piss me off also. Apparently, Eva said she's not going to be on there, but they were just filming at Eva's house. So, Eva. So, they just started filming? Eva, Cynthia, Candy, and Kenya was at Eva's house. And Eva had, she did a little, on her Insta story, we saw the cameras and stuff there, and then Kenya and Autumn posted a picture and said they met up at Eva's house. And then Portia, they said, why is the Portia film? And Portia came back from that protest and Bravo was her quarantine for 14 days before she starts filming. And then... Nina, she was she on quarantine? When she came back from that protest. Candy said they... Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. Candy said yeah. they tested... Uh, they get tested weekly. Um, 
So they got to make sure everybody have their stuff or whatever. Candy said they get tested a lot. It's actually annoying. And um, uh, do they have to put their finger? Is that what I it is? Hope, they have to put I their hope that no shit will probably be annoying. Um, mm -hmm. Nene is still in contract negotiations, but those four started filming, and Tanya and Portia start filming in next week. So let's talk about Nene's a discrimination lawsuit against Bravo and True TV. You know she more about this than I do. She took her stupid ass on live and said nothing. A oh whole God. bunch of she took her. I was so mad at Nene. She Wait, said, Nene did? Nene sat on. I'm gonna send it to you. She sat on a live and was a. She said a whole bunch of nothing. Everybody says this is what she said on her couch. Everybody wants to know if I'm okay. I'm doing fine, and uh, Greg is doing fine. And then five <laughs> minutes later, they said I'm doing fine, and uh, Greg's doing fine. And I finally commented. I said, "But are you doing fine? <laughs> saying you're doing fine? You're basically on here saying a bunch of nothing." And she said, "When it's time to say something, I will." And down, not and down. Well, what you came on live for? You already said when it's time to say something, you will. What the fuck you came on live for? You gave us nothing. I was so fast in there. You gave us nothing. <laughs> well, you know they can't speak on it until they can. Um, but what is actually happening? So what are they saying? What is she saying the discrimination lawsuit is? Like, do you know? It's rumored. She didn't address it, but it's rumored that uh, Nene felt like the production staff is basically um, discriminating against her as a black woman, and th she's saying they've been. Um, they're on, and they're being um, picky and choosy in terms of who they want to have spinoff shows. Okay. And um, she was saying, like, she, she's the only one that has to negotiate her contract over and over. Like, so she's, I think because they're not giving her what she's worth. That's what she feels. And that's that's what's rumored. Now she didn't speak. Now this is just what's rumored. Um, All right. I, don't I sound like her? And um, so I'm okay. Me and Greg. We're doing great. I'm like, girl, you already said that. Like, why did you come on here? But you know what? I knew, this is how I knew Bravo. I ain't saying Bravo is, but I want a Bravo contract down the road. I'm, For sure. I'm just, make sure y'all record. I want a Bravo contract down the road. But this is how I know Bravo have a little bit of discrimination. The first set of people to ever get spinoffs were the white bitches. Correct. Because how the fuck did Kim get a spinoff before Nene? Correct. And Kim is still on there seven seasons later. She <laughs> is. Because we were, people were interested in Kim's life after Real Housewives with her husband. You know, she was pregnant. That's they what she like, got. They, they do like Kim. Hold on, hold on. Let me correct Dirty Armageddon. They said, Ooh. but Candy Porsche has spent. No, they had infomercials. Uh, Bitch, Kim, come on, Q. I'm saying what Nene said. Don't blame me. You are out of control. Candy, Candy. let me tell y'all. Candy had a ski trip show that had four episodes. Her wedding had six episodes. Her uh, Candy Coated Nights had one episode. Her Candy... <laughs> Wait, her Candy Coated Nights had only had one? One nighttime episode with Tiny. And then her Candy Factory only had one episode. And then um, I think now her... Bravo, she got a new show she's filming for OLG. That one, I think, has eight episodes. Um, so are they done filming for OLG? Almost. Not yet. My friend's on there, guys. My friend Torrin is one of the stars on there. I can't wait to see it. And, uh, yes, and then Portia had a three-episode uh, baby, baby special. special. And then <laughs> Nene, Nene had an eight-episode wedding special. And that was it. You know what I'm saying? And they give yeah. Candy a lot. You know what I'm saying? Candy did have the ski trip and her wedding. and Yeah. They, they keep giving Candy chances, but, you know. But The thing is, they don't understand that we don't give a fuck about what Candy's doing. We don't give a fuck about OG. Like, we don't give a fuck. And yeah, I feel I like there's I wanna like see a, my, I wanna see at least a Vanderpump um, pump rules or Vanderpump rules. And it's not going to be like Vanderpump Rules. It's not. It's not going to do it. Because Vanderpump Stop Rules. It. Why are you doing that before it even airs? Because I know. I feel it in my shana -na. I feel it. It's not going to do what people think it's going to do. And I feel like the only reason why Candy is getting these spinoffs is because of Todd. Because he knows production. He, you know what I'm saying? And so he pitches it to them. And but it's He like, definitely was behind production at one point. We don't give a fuck about Candy. What the fuck she doing? Her goddamn, her grandmama, her mama. We don't give a fuck about nothing that she's doing. Yeah, girl, we don't care. They, had, they, had, they gave them infomercials. Um, and if you think about the other 
spinoff. Tamara from OC had Tamara's OC wedding that had like six episodes. Mm -hmm. And then Bethany Ever After had like three seasons from Real Housewives of New York. Mm -hmm. um, but yeah, not all of them get spinoff. But Kim, let's be clear. They were trying to, somebody was saying something about Kim. I said, let's be clear. Kim can get canceled at eight seasons and y'all can say shit. But guess what? You know how long an eight season run by just you and your family is? That's yes, long all long your long fucking long. kids. Clown her all you want. But guess what? That bitch left Housewives. And they like, oh, she not on Housewives. I said, she don't need to. That bitch make millions on her own show. Literally. Matter of fact, all her kids get a check. Let's start with that. Yes. Yeah. Each and every one of them. Each and every They're one good. of them get a check. Like she and They're she's good. a producer. Kim is, is very smart. Y'all can say very. Are. She can get canceled and they can laugh, but you know how long how many seasons have you been on eight seasons straight? That by yourself. Okay. You gotta give Kim her credit. And uh yeah, I just feel like I see where Nene is saying discrimination. But I'm gonna I'm gonna say this. Nene has to understand that you are not the Shawnee O'Neal of Housewives. You do okay. not make you do not make the decisions. So somebody wants to switch up something, that doesn't mean they're against you. Sometimes the show trends in different directions. Correct. Okay. That's it. Now okay. But if that's the case, then what the fuck? Hold on. Okay. Hold on. Okay. Now, I, was about to, I was about to give it to Candy Grab. Now, now Go we're ahead. Saying, we're saying that uh Nene's fans like us will definitely stop watching because I don't want to watch it unless she's on there. That's correct. Me. And it's been proven when she's not on there what the ratings do. But correct. I do understand what Bravo is doing because there's really only four OGs left out of all the Housewives franchises. They want to trend in a different direction. Not saying They want they the younger audience, audience, which is why they brought the YouTube girl. That's, and that's it. And, and, but when yeah. you understand that, you can't that's like me and you. If they try to get some younger bitches on there with us, we can't get upset that they're trying to trend in a different direction. We just need to go. Do I our, we just need to go do our own thing. But also pay my fucking coin. Understand that I'm the reason why the viewers are here. Understand that. Kim was calling Bravo racist at one point. Was she? Girl, what's you it know, called though? She was um, a white girl on there for a long time, so I get it. Because she was saying that Bravo was letting them gang up on her. I remember, her, I remember her saying that she was the only white girl, and they never tested out no other white girls. They were only testing out black. Because first of all, they didn't. Let's be clear. Like Nene said, they weren't even looking for a white girl. She went to bat for Kim. They weren't even yeah. looking for a white girl. They were looking for all black housewives. Yeah. So yeah, but go ahead. I'm sorry. No, that's. I mean, that's pretty much it. I'm just. I'm. I'm over all of it. Um, I do think that Nene deserves her fucking coin, though. She's the reason why that franchise is still rocking. Correct. And so I think that they need to give her what she's fucking worth. Period. Yeah. She, if they say she say four million, I'll say, well, sounds good. Oh. <laughs> give her her fucking money. Y'all gonna make well above that. Y'all make well above that. Um, let's talk about Elise Neal. <laughs> about that. So Elise Neal um, did an interview on Instagram Live, I want to say, talking about her experience on All of Us, which is based on Will Smith and Jada and um, his ex-wife. What's his ex-wife name? Uh, Cherie. Cherie. You know, All of Us was based on their relationship. Um, and Elise Neal basically said that it was a very unhappy environment and that, you know, that. Will and Jada been unhappy for a while. <laughs> And I just don't understand. But, I mean, if that's what they want to do, we got to respect people's marriages. But go ahead. So one thing we got to keep in mind, when Will Smith was popping off, remember, he was married to Cherie during Independence Day and all that. They got divorced, and then he met Jada shortly afterward. Will yeah. Smith became a mega star in the in the mix of Jada's big career. And she yeah. had to slow people. People keep forgetting she had two children in the mix of trying to keep her career going and having to support your husband. She was very, very unhappy being in the shadow behind Will Smith because it's no longer Jada Pinkett. It was Jada Pinkett Smith. You know? And they were ha unhappy for a while and they kept trying to work through it, work through it. August came along, gave her that little spark and she realized, you know, I do love my husband. Let's just try to make this work. They tried to yeah. make it work. That's what it is. But I do understand Elise I'm not going to be coming here if I keep seeing all this tension. Like, I, I I, don't enjoy... I didn't come to Hollywood for this shit. You know what I'm saying? Correct. And you remember, and she she was on the Hughley's and every damn thing. Like, Anissa is a seasoned actress. Mm -hmm. um, I, I, I get it. But Lisa Ray, she did, I want to hear her side because she was on the show just as much as Elise was. 
So that's who side I really want to see. What did Elise feel and what did Terry J. Bond feel? Because she was on a good bit of episodes. I want to know what they felt. But no, they were on there. Terry J. Bond was on the show? As a recurring um, girl. She was like one of the best friends. Um, um, I don't remember that. Because I always, and I say that because I always remember LaVita Alexa Jenkins. I know her face. I, and I, so when I see her, I make note of what she's in. She was so that's here. why I'm like, I don't remember seeing her. She was in Steve Harvey's show and Meet the Browns for like four seasons. Ye yeah. Yes. Mm -hmm. And she was like a weird current also, but I don't remember her being on all of us, but she could. She was I don't on know. a few episodes I remember because I always remember her voice. But yeah, Sheree, okay, so Sheree and Jada's Red Table Talk was funny to me. Because mm -hmm. um, Sheree said she'll never forget uh, calling Jada and said, bitch, why is you in my house? And Jada said, this is my house now. And they had got into it over the phone. And I get it, you know, Will, uh, but he said divorcing Sheree was one of the hardest things he had to do in his life. Because he had a whole son and Sheree moved way far from him, you know, and that was hard. Mm -hmm. um, I feel bad for them. Do you feel like, do you feel like they're back together now or they're just... I feel like they ain't gonna keep whatever they got going. I feel like Will gonna continue to cheat. He gonna continue to be with that girl or whatever. And him and Jada gonna continue to do whatever they do. They're just gonna do it better on the racks. There's gonna be a lot of NDA. And uh, that's gonna be what it is. Um, but let's talk about Amanda Seals on The Breakfast Club. I loved it, yeah. I loved it too. I so if you guys did not watch, um, Amanda Seals was on the was on the Breakfast Club. I want to say this past week, mm -hmm. and she talked about like her trials and tribulations um, of just coming into herself and understanding like Hollywood is not for her. Um, she what happened uh, with the BET Awards? You know what I'm saying? Even though it was amazing, there was a lot of things that she had to do by herself. She's a fucking G for that. Oh, um, absolutely. Yeah. I had no idea she was doing literally everything by herself. She did her hair, her makeup, everything by herself. And I thought, I was like, well, she looked good. I even said, I was like, oh, she looked good. I normally <laughs> don't even like Amanda, but I got to give her credit. After listening to that, I said, that's a lot to do by yourself. And listening yeah. to the earpiece, trying, that's a lot. Yeah. It's a lot to take, you know, all of these pointers from other people. Um, and then she, she was talking about, like, you know, finding herself and, and feeling suicidal. Um, and having those type of uh, moments, and I just I really appreciate it. If it was, if it's not any other interview, I appreciate it. This interview that mm -hmm. she did because it was really like an eye opener. You know what I'm saying? Like, and I really respected it because of that. Um, and I told you I wanted to apologize to her because I used to ride Amanda because I felt like she was just a big troublemaker, mm -hmm. and I still feel like some ways she do take fault and stuff. But I understand she has overcome so much. I understand why she's so aggressive at times. Like, y'all y'all doing too much. You know, and, and I just respect anybody that has to do an award show by themselves. And then she Woo! has to go down the street and get the Wi-Fi. Yeah. Like, that, yep. that's some shit we'll do. I know that's some shit we'll do. Real Hell quick. yeah. And, and I was like. And I this was the see. first time the BT was on all Viacom. Uh, via, via, is Viacom? Viacom. Viacom. Um, platform CBS, like, and it was black as fuck. Every commercial was black. You know what I'm saying? Like, it was so it. empowering. And like, she so. It, so she feel she should feel good about that. Yeah. Um. What else you want to talk? Did you say you had something to say about Meg or whatever that you was gonna say? Did you already say it? I I got I can't say it no more. I thought about it and uh uh don't do that. What would you know? I what, thought that? about it. Q, well, we you fucking raggedy hold bitch, on. you. Bitch, hold on, hold on, bitch. We <laughs> no, because I waited all hold fucking years to say, say it. ho. Let me say it, ho. We got a minute 30. I'm going to say it for you. All right. Time. So in terms of Meg, I came to the conclusion that I know y'all get on she gossip for not liking black women, but I don't like those type of black women when they do stuff like that. I had to come to the realization. <laughs> uh, hold on, we got a question. Oh, we do we have time? No, it's like a minute left. What do you guys of the girlfriend of Jeff Bezos leaving her ex me being that boyfriend? Which black woman will get out there? Um, we'll if, they, that. If, if, black, if white if white women with that kind of money, if white men with that kind of money wanted to date us, I'm open. I'm well, here. let me say, y'all, we got fifty seconds. I'm gonna say this and win it, but I'm gonna cut off at like ten seconds. So I learned what type of black women. I, I love all my black sisters, but there are certain type of black women I don't like. I realize. Meg is the one I would just have to speak to. I don't like that type. I realize I don't like that type. And I, I, I realize because of 
First of all, she ate raw kale out of a bag, and it did something to me. And Girl. Then, and then I feel like she hit Tori. That's just my opinion. I can be proved. I'm, I can stand corrected. And then that's a big ass bitch to me. And I just like you know, girls that are that aggressive will give me anxiety. And I know I will, I don't want to feel like I have to fight you when I'm around you. So that's the type of girl I just have to just not. But we're on ten seconds, so we back, guys. We love you guys. We'll see you next week. Bye.